everything will be recorded. Uh, that is including the chat messages. Yeah. Yes, so, thank you, Dr. Varia. Yeah. So welcome to this bootcamp. Uh, this is a bootcamp in conjunction, joint event uh, in conjunction with uh, GG Ahmedabad and GG Pune. We are so excited to launch this uh, first uh, bootcamp of ours. There are many members uh, with GG Ahmedabad and Pune that, who are planning to take up their level one certification examination this Diwali uh, holidays. So we made it a point to guide all those educators who wish to you know, uh, upgrade themselves or certify themselves with Google certifications that uh, how things are there inside it. So in this bootcamp, we are going to share with you what things could be there in the examinations, what are the tools that are going to, that you need to brush up with when you are working with Googles, and uh, all, all those things, uh, what scenarios or certain like certain those things. And we have some very good mentors with us, uh, the experts of the field who are going to guide us for each relevant topic. Uh, Reshma, we have 58 and one minute to go. Yes. And I'm from California, uh, though I'm purely Indian. I'm from California at present, and it is 5.30 in the morning at my place. So I am. Yeah, is sunshine have up again, 5.30? Not yet. It is all Not dark. Yet. OK. <laughs> so uh, but I'm excited. It is nice uh, to be with so many good people around you. Yes. So uh, the, all those members who are present, uh, let me just uh, give you a brief that GG stands for uh, uh, Google Educator Group. And uh, the GGs are uh, actually voluntary organizations that give this kind of training, that share knowledge and expertise with the educators. And the main purpose is to help the educators to work with Google technologies with uh, remote teaching in uh, their classroom. So it's, it's worthwhile, you can say it's a professional learning network, you can say, and it's always proud to get associated with uh, your regional GEG. So in Gujarat, we have GEG Ahmedabad, and for Maharashtra, we have is uh, GEG Pune. So that's fine. Uh, we can also have for both of them or any of them, uh, that's OK. <coughs> and okay, we should we start, Dr. Varia? Sorry. Yeah. So we keep keep uh, trainings uh, regularly uh, every Friday, Saturday, and we uh, share the topics, we share the expertise, we share how things work with uh, Google Classroom or Google Forms or Google Docs. Initially, we are working with the basic uh, things, and then we shall be working with some of the advanced topics, like how we will how we will be using sheets to explain this particular topic in your class, and how we will be using Google Drawings for a particular topic in the class. <coughs> Yeah, Reshma, we're good to go. I suppose 67, and we should not be uh, wasting time because we've got plenty of uh, things to be rolled out today. Yes, Dr. Varia. And uh, so I will start because we are crunch with time. It's a boot camp. Uh, we will have uh, multiple trainings later on, but let us start today. So uh, welcome all uh, to our first ever boot camp for Google Certified Educator Level 1. So this boot camp is particularly based on showing you all the tools that you can use in the classroom, which are provided by Google for Education. And this uh, program is basically to can be used by educators in elementary, secondary, as well as higher education. So uh, I will just run you through a little quickly what it is. Before that, I want to show you all our amazing team that is going to be here. So I would request all our team members to have their cameras open. We want to see you. Um, I'd like to introduce quickly Ms. Sangeeta Gulati. Uh, she is a GEG leader of Delhi. So anybody who is in Delhi wish to connect with uh, Ms. Sangeeta Gulati, uh, please, uh, Ms. Sangeeta Gulati, you can put up your form and your details in the chat. So welcome to our session. Uh, then it is myself, uh, Reshma Honap. I am the GEG leader of Pune. Uh, Dr. Vishal Varya, he is a GG leader of Ahmedabad. We also have with us Dr. Najit Kaur, mm -hmm. who is a, a amazing educator in Delhi and already Google certified um, level one. We have Mr. Nayan Shaha. Uh, he is a, a wonderful a person. We will be sharing the whole, and he is the IT administrator in his school. Uh, we have Ms. Dipali Medekar. She'll be joining us a little late, but she works in Canada, and she is the IT administrator in her school as well. Uh, we have uh, 
Mr. Devraj VD. He's our new member, but he has been contributing amazingly on other platforms. So he is also a Google certified educator with us who will be sharing some tools. We have Murtaza from Dubai. Murtaza, Murtaza is a robotic instructor. He is also a Google certified educator who will be sharing his expertise with us and help us learn. We have Mrs. Mukta Sablok. She is a PGT computer science teacher and, 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 and basically an aspiring Google certified educator. She's already on her way and she is excited to share what she learned with all of us. So welcome all of you and we look forward to learning from you today. Uh, now let me quickly go over what do you mean by Google certified educators? So uh, we all know that now it is um, a time that we start using technology in our schools, in our classrooms and get empowered. We are actually preparing ourselves and our generation for the 21st century, what is coming over. So we want to be prepared ourselves. So the Google fundamental trainings covers, it certifies the educators to make yourself that to get recognized, to demonstrate your proficiency and make a bigger impact in your classroom as well as around you in your school, in your uh, country, I would say, and beyond. So uh, we will go over all the tools. When you're ready, the examination is, uh, the only, only fees that is required is the exam fee, which is $10. It will be converted in your currency wherever you are from. Then it's a three hour online exam. It's a 30% uh, pass or fail. Then uh, we have a, sorry, 80% pass or fail. The, once you get certified, it is valid for three years. So you don't have to worry about recertifying every year. Now, it has to be recertified. That means you need to uh, give the exam uh, one more time. Yes, Mr. Gulati? No, no, it's OK. We are, somebody else was presenting. So a request to the participants not to click on uh, present now. That will break the flow of the presentation. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. You will have to represent uh, again okay. or we can pin your presentation. Yeah. Okay, give me one second. I'll go over the whole thing again. Or we can pin your presentation to the screen. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Is it all good yeah, now? All good. Yeah, all good. Carry on. Okay, perfect. So I was talking about recertification of the exam. So just now, as you saw, Google is coming up with a lot of good tools for the teachers. So as, as they keep developing, we need to update ourselves to be able to use those in our classroom, make a little bit of twist changes. So that is why decertification is required after three years. Then um, it's a very serious exam. It's a three hour exam. Uh, it is an objective, multiple choice, as well as creating scenarios. Uh, there is somebody else who is... Uh, yeah, yeah. Those, those, those will be removed. Okay, no worry. And then uh, the only requirement for you to you should have a good place, quiet place to give your exam with a web camera and a Chrome extension that is required. So this is what you will be required to do. Now, Google Fundamentals Training focuses on four Cs. This is exactly what we want to use in our schools. That is collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinkings. So now when we say that get ready to use technology in your classrooms, you would say, how do I do this in the classroom? I have been doing it as a person in the class. So all the Google tools that we will be discussing about and which are a part of your first, uh, which are a part of your uh, first level exam will be discussed today. So we are preparing our students to be globally connected. We are giving them opportunity to collaborate within their classroom as well as globally. We are also giving them a voice and a platform to be able to uh, uh, have a choice and a voice of themselves and to uh, work accordingly. And then we also have from teachers uh, side, we have all personalization of your content the way you want to present it, the way you would like to give it to your students and also collaborate with other teachers. So as I showed you, we have a wonderful panel uh, today. We have an amazing group of uh, educators. So I'm just uh, uh, 
canceling my presentation now because I want to hand it over to Dr. Varya, who is going to take over one of the tools and simultaneously we will be uh, one after another. Each educator is going to show you. It might be a little fast for you because it's not a training session, it's a boot camp. But remember, the results don't last like your uh, workout boot camp. They will remain with you. It is not that uh, today you learn and tomorrow you go back to your or original shape after the boot camp. This boot camp will stay with you. You can always go back, watch the recording, one one tool at a time, practice, uh, practice it uh, in your limits and be ready for the exam. So yeah. welcome all of you. Let's start with Dr. Varya. Yeah. Thanks, Reshma, for the start. And as Reshma has said, as Reshma, Reshma has told you what is Google certification, what is the level of the Google certification, what is the level of the So that's fine uh, that we have learned. Now, the very first tool that we are going to learn today is uh, Google Drive. You all know that folders you have accessed all of them. Everybody is knowing uh, what is a folder right? in, in say Windows. So here I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you that how these things are working. Uh, I suppose everyone is able to see the screen. Is it on now? Yeah, okay. Okay, now you see here, here is this thing. So I will just start a new thing. To open a drive, you have to just either you have to just click on say drive.google.com. So if you are logged in, you have your particular login, which is uh, your login, that drive will be open. So here you can see this is the screen of my drive. And uh, yes, you see this is my icon where, sorry for this, yeah. So this is my drive. This is my drive place, and this is actually how the entire scenario looks like, right? You can see here there are different folders over here. Uh, so these these are the different folders, okay? And these are the different files. So this is actually the root place of your drive, and this is quick access. So this is the root place of the drive. Now when you click on new, you get options like you have to point a folder, you want to upload a file, you want to say upload an entire folder, you want to create a Google Doc, sheet, slides, or forms, right? Say for example. Say, uh, this is something that DC level one bootcamp, I already created a folder. Okay, so I'm just clicking on that. I'm opening that folder in which I have got this many uh, files. Now these are the files that is that we are going to use in this particular uh, bootcamp. Now you see this, there is a bootcamp resource folder. Okay, so I want that this particular folder is available to all. And in this, I want to say share a particular file okay so I'll go to my bootcamp okay the file that I would like to share with you say for example I would request the microphone please yeah so <clears throat> so you see suppose say for example this is a bootcamp one file and I want this file to be with the bootcamp resources. But I want to make a copy of this file. So you right click this file, you get so many other options, right? These are the different options you get. I right click on it and say I get a thing is that make a copy, okay? So the moment I make a copy of it, you will see that uh, an, another copy will be created, which is called as copy of bootcamp one. So this is the file copy of bootcamp one. Now I want this particular file to be moved onto that folder. So I've got two options. Either I can go right click to it. I can say move to. Okay. So when I say move to, I will get the access to a particular file and say for this bootcamp resources, this particular folder I've prepared for participants. So all the mentors will be sharing their uh, this, uh, presentations or videos or any resources over here. And this folder will later be shared with all the participants. So I want to move this particular file to this particular this folder and I will just double click on it. So I'm into inside this folder and I say move here. Okay, so I will just go to this folder or I will check whether the file is there. Yes. Now I want this file to be renamed. Okay, 
so the rename this is an option so i would just say that uh, this is a particular say main uh, slide or main presentation and i just click on okay so here the file is renamed so folders is something uh, just as you are managing your folders in your windows directory the same way you have to maintain your folder in the google directory now the speciality of this particular thing is that this is going to available all all the time and you can have it accessed wherever you access your login so you see this this is my login okay and i have logged in through this particular id and therefore for this id this is my drive so anything this is my drive if i share anything someone shares with me then every of those folders or files will be there it shared with me folders so i have got multiple people sharing different files and folders with me so all those things will remain as it is with me in share with me someone has created a drive and shared entire drive then that particular drive will be available over here and this is your uh, my drive so this is your area you see this storage so if your id is a single user id that will be 15 gb of total space you will be provided but if you are working with a educational domain then you shall be given unlimited uh, usage okay so unlimited drive space and unlimited photographs you can store so uh, two points i would like to share it over here say uh, this say folders or files will be created here now you want to create another file okay inside this folder then in this case you have to just go to this say i want to create a google doc and i will just create a blank document okay and it's a create and share okay docs are covered by uh, another mentor so i'll not be covering much with this i'm just showing you what will happen to the file that you create okay so i will just rename the file over Google. here yeah ugly rakhte hain chhod do chhodte nahi ho na galti ho raha hai mere paas aa gaya koi try ke bare mein bata raha hai ugly hata ho yeah i i would request people to can you mute your mic please tumne chhod do chup rehna kya uh dr varnia do you have uh, options to mute everybody uh unfortunately i don't have that option with me at the point okay that is okay request all participants to please mute yourself yeah so see mute karne ke liye bola yeah mute in and upma ma'am is there no you need to mute yeah she is muted okay i am coming back to my uh, topic so jaise file file maine yahan pe create ki this particular file is over here right now this file मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट अगर लेवल वन की एग्जाम दे रहे हैं तो गूगल ड्राइव में आपसे क्या पूछा जाए ना विच इज इम्पोर्टेंट सी फाइल क्रिएट करना फोल्डर क्रिएट करना इट्स वेरी सिंपल आपको आता है आई डोंट हैव एनीथिंग टू से फर्दर टू दिस बट व्हाट इज इम्पोर्टेंट इज हाउ विल यू शेयर द फोल्डर आई विल शेयर द फाइल सो आई दिस इज आई विल राइट क्लिक ऑन इक एंड इज एन ऑप्शन कॉल शेयर ओवर इन सो वेन आई क्लिक ऑन इट i get an option to share this file and i can add the emails now whenever i add the emails there, there is an option say you can add a person as an editor as a commentator or as a viewer okay me lekin mere ko sirf sab ko sirf copy dena hai view karne ke waste aur i want to just share it only for those who have the link so over here it is uh, changed to every anyone in this link so as a viewer so yahan pe bhi agar aap is link ko copy kar dete ho so this particular link is getting copied and anyone with this link can view this file so i'm just sharing it right away in this uh, chat window as a demo if you click this then you will be having the access to this particular presentation as a viewer so this is how things are working as a share uske alawa you can make this particular folder available offline because You see every time you you access google drive it will be consuming some internet it will come consume some data but if you want certain things to be available offline get stored into your device or get stored into your mobile handset then it will be available offline so these are the simple topics in drive there is nothing much that uh, needs to be taught in this case file kaise create karna hai folder kaise create karna hai ek cheez different aapko yahan pe bata deta hu ki unlike 
copying an entire folder from one place to another place in windows you cannot copy a folder from one position to another position you have to can copy only the file and you can move you cannot copy entire folder okay so if i if i click on any of these folders if i click on any of this file i will i will just get say i will say they move to it or i will say make a copy okay so this option is available for the file but when i say i click on the folder and i say then i will not get an option of make a copy you cannot copy the entire folder okay you can yes you can however download the entire folder you can upload the entire folder see if i want to uh, you know upload something over here okay so i will say that go to new i will say file upload okay and then a dialog box will come where i can say this particular file i want to upload okay so this particular file i want to upload over here i will say open and this file will be uploaded over here so things are very simple as you see now you got this particular file right so this file will be now be available to all uh, who will be having access to this particular folder so drive is nothing but an online space provided to the google user jiske jisme aap apni files kar sakte hain uska how will you use this drive see for personal purposes uh, it is advisable say you can keep a folder for your qualifications jisme aap aapke sare qualifications ke folder uh, files aap scan karke rakho aapko kabhi bhi kahin bhi usko submit karna hai just select it share it and uh, you can easily share through whatsapp you can easily share to email those files will be shared and this entire thing is very very secure nobody can access your folder unless and until you give them the right to access you give them the sharing rights only then they will be able to access else nobody will be able to access your folder it's completely safe so yahan pe bhi aapko dikhai de raha hai there is a link you can also give this link to the folder okay so this is a link to the folder so if i share this link okay so yahan se yahan se aapko change karna padega entire anyone with the link and as a viewer i have copy this i want to share this entire folder and i come to uh, the meet session and i i say and i just quickly paste it and once i paste it it share with the people who are uh, having in this chat so anybody can access now this particular folder similarly there are option like you can add people add collaborators to this that how who can add to this folder who can add files to this folder yahan pe dekho maine add karke rakha hai already so all the mentors are here all the mentors would be able to add to this particular file folder so they are they are editors of the file editors of the folder similarly you want to delete this is a delete icon okay this is a preview icon how the folder will be previewed so nothing much to be explained into this particular aspect so this is something about drive the purpose of uh, having this portion inside level 1 certification is to just make you aware ki aapko documents online kaise rakhna hai your drive is your cupboard and jaise cupboard ke andar you know डिफरेंट सेक्शन होते हैं वैसे ड्राइव के अंदर आपके पास डिफरेंट फोल्डर्स रहेंगे और फोल्डर्स के अंदर आपकी फाइल रहेंगी इट इज ऑलवेज एडवाइजेबल टू ऑर्गेनाइज योर ड्राइव इन टू डिफरेंट फोल्डर्स अदरवाइज इट विल बी वेरी मच मेसी सी यू कैन सी ओवर इयर आई गॉट डिफरेंट फोल्डर्स एंड आई गॉट डिफरेंट सर्टन फाइल्स विच एव नॉट स्टोर एनीवेर एल्स सो दिस इज द रूट थिंग एंड दिस इज समथिंग इन साइड दैट फोल्डर so i think i'm done with my topic i would want devraj to continue with his topic i'll just stop sharing my screen so this is something regarding the folder so devraj will continue with the next topic that is google docs okay thank you dr varya uh, very good. good evening everybody are you able to hear dr varya yes sir yes sir audible Sir, but there is some disturbance in your mic. Uh, I think fan or is. Yes, yes, fan. So let us start with the Google Doc. 
first of all, I will show you how to create a new doc in Drive. Just now, Dr. Maria already is shown. Uh, just to click the plus button, there is Google Doc. See, I am. Uh, I have created now one new doc. Then I have to name this doc. Now it is untitled document. So suppose I am going to give the name uh, Geometry. Okay. So now I named this uh, doc Geometry. So this is a Google Doc. This is the one method we can create a new doc. Otherwise, using the uh, apps menu from here, we can also get a, a doc. Uh, so anyway, you can uh, create one doc. Uh, it is easy to create in the drive. Then after creating that, uh, we can copy paste, we can edit everything like a uh, word, what okay. we can do all the things in this. Uh, now, suppose I am going to uh, search one topic on geometry. Suppose I want to copy paste one paragraph about geometry. Here is the explore button. I can uh, get it from uh, any website, for example, Wikipedia. So I am going to search about uh, uh, geometry from Wikipedia. Okay. So I am going to get to one paragraph. So I will copy paste. So this. So it is pasted here. So now, like where uh, we can uh, change the format, uh, text style, font size. Uh, I can make it bold, color. All other options are there. I think all of you are familiar with that. Now, I am going to uh, write one direct comment. So suppose in this uh, first line, I want to tell all of you uh, put a comment. So here is one add comment icon. I can just click. Uh, I am telling you uh, read or one comment. So now I have put already a general comment. All of you can see this. Then suppose I want to put a special comment. Uh, I have to mention one particular person. So here I am telling one particular person to refer more about this. Then I have to use the plus symbol then that particular person's uh, mail id i have to suppose i am using my another uh, mail id here for example so so this uh, particular comment only that person uh, can resolve after doing this you should resolve this after doing this part he can just put a tick so that i can see what he has done everything then all these editing all these things we can get from comment history whatever we are editing who is editing who is deleting all the things we will get from here and in this uh, so this way we are creating one google doc uh, we are adding comment adding comment to a particular person then suppose i want to share uh, this with the uh, one person, I can enter the email address, or I suppose you now I am going to share to my another ID. I can choose it. So, already Dr. Varia has shown this part, I think. So, Google Doc is very useful thing. We can uh, use our documents to digitalize, for example, where documents we can upload directly to Drive. Then uh, we can open with Google Doc. That is why we can digitalize, we can explore, uh, we can add a chart, we can add diagrams, we can insert everything. So uh, even some particular link or hyperlink. Uh, then support I want to insert one footnote uh, of this paragraph. Uh, I choose this from Wikipedia, this URL. I can copy, I can paste. So I will get footnote here so we can digitalize all our documents we can explore more we can insert hyperlink we can insert website even youtube videos everything is possible with the, the google docs these are very easy easy to handle we can handle from anywhere uh, 
suppose uh, I am at present in Maldives. Uh, after two months, I will go to India for holidays. That time also I am uh, taking online classes and uh, handling my uh, lesson plans, everything through this uh, drive. We are having this, everything shared in the drive. We are using this, our lesson plans, everything we are using, using uh, Google documents. So we are yeah, collaborating, real time collaboration. Uh, two or three people, so students can do collaborative work, everything. So Google doc uh, documents are very useful. So we, you will study detail in uh, practical sessions. Okay, thank you. Then I would like to yeah. come on to present next session. Yeah. So b before uh, Mutasa uh, starts the session, I would like to comment theories in Google Docs for level one. What is important? Is uh, you can mute yourself. Uh, so that, yes. Yeah. So what is important for uh, uh, level one examinations for Google Docs is basically you should know how to create a document, you should know how to share the document, you should know how to insert comments into the document, that is what Devraj has already shared with us. And again, you should know how to insert a chart inside the document or you should know how to, how to insert a footnote. So if you, if you have worked with Word, MS Word previously or if you are working with MS Word, there is nothing much new you need to learn in Google Docs. All the features are more or less the same. But only thing is you have to keep in mind is that how, we, how you will share the document with other users. Maybe say you are a teacher in your class and you want to share this particular document to your students. In a way, so that all the students can write their name or write their content inside the document. So you, how to share document is a, so that it will, the students will be the editor of the document or you want to share it only for viewing of the students. So that sharing portion is very important for which level one you will be given the scenarios that you know, question will be asked in a way that say you are a teacher of your class and you want to share a document which is a timetable to the students and you don't want the timetable any student to change the timetable so how would you solve it so the answer is basically you share with the student only with the viewer rights so it's very simple even the timetable would be there inside the document once they ask the question and it's only the sharing that they would there is important Right. So in most of the cases, these are the th simple things that will be important for level one uh, documentation, the basic things. So Murtuza would be continuing with Google Sheets. Yes, Murtuza, you can start. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Varya. Thank you, Devraj. Uh, so I would be uh, showing you some features of Google Sheets. Just as Dr. Varya mentioned, uh, Sheets is very similar to if you have used Excel or Numbers. Okay. So let me start sharing my screen. We'll be covering three main topics. Uh, we'll be covering how to organize data. We'll be covering how to analyze the data. And then we will be covering how to publish the data. So I've taken up a sample uh, sheet of uh, where there are different scores uh, mentioned. And I've just used uh, some of the presenter's name as the student name. Okay. Now this is. Uh, this is a pre-built she sheet which I have. If I wanted to add my own sheet, I go and click on the left-hand side bottom where you can see a plus icon. So if I click on that, that will open up a new sheet. Okay. Double click on the, on the name of the sheet and you can rename the sheet to whatever sheet you want. Now let's go back to the sheet. So uh, the terminologies are very much the same we have cells so let me uh, delete the bottom row over here okay now the first thing uh, we we would like to see is what is the average score of reshma over all the months uh, over here so if i click on here on the last cell where i want the average score to be visible okay and i can go and click on average and then i just select the cell which I wanted, and I press enter. Okay, that would reflect the average score which is for that month. Now, if I wanted, if I want to find out the average score for all the other students, there are two ways I could do it. I can hover over the cell, and I can see there is a small blue dot on the right hand bottom. Okay, when I go over the dot, you can see my cursor becomes a cross target arrow, and if I drag that across all the way, that would 
copy the formula to all the students and give us the average cell. The other way is if I go over the same cell and I double click on the uh, arrow, it would still copy paste it all as an average for all the students. I could also find out the average, say, for the month of August. Okay, so I, I I could I could select, I could go back to average and select all the cells in that month of August and press enter. Okay, and similarly, I could drag it to all the month till June. So this is how I could use, and you have other options like finding sum, count, max, min, all of them. Now. You know when we uh, when we have uh, students' data, it's usually uh, a task for us to find out okay who has passed, who has failed, or how to analyze data, especially when we are using Google Forms and we are you know exporting the answer sheet to, to to Excel. What do we do with that? Now, one of the ways which I found out very useful for me to really find out the inside of data. Now, for me, uh, from this uh, Excel sheet, it's quite difficult to find out who has passed, who is doing well. Was not so for that. Uh, uh, what I could do is I could use the explore button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my data over here, and then I click on the explore button. Now what the explore button does it, it gives me some insights from from the data which I have. Okay, so it, it uh, you can see that it has done an analysis and prepared a chart for me for all the students, and I can just add. Sorry. Just a minute. This is a brilliant feature. Explore is a very brilliant feature of uh, you know any of these tools. That's doc sheet or slides, whatever. Yeah, please continue, Mr. So thank you, Doctor Roy. Uh, so if I click, I'm just going to select it back. Click on the explore feature. Just a minute, my sheet is loading. No, no, you just select a particular data cells only, not the rows. No, don't select really entire rows. So if I if I would add this, that would add it to my chart. Okay, now you can see I have the data for all the students, and I can see their progress across across um, across the different months. Okay, I may not. Uh, I may want to do an individual uh, data analysis of a student. So in that case, I would just select, say, for example, Miss Reshma, and then it would give me a chart of Miss Reshma's progress. I could add that into my sheet. Okay. Now I, I may not want my data and my graphs to be on the same page. So I, if I click on the three, uh, three magic buttons on the top right, I can then say, move to own sheet. So when I press, click on this. It would create the own sheet, which is just for the chart available. Okay. Now, there are other ways to also make the chart. So, one of the uh, one of the ways is say, if I select the data, and I click on insert chart. You see that that has created a column chart for me. Okay. I can change that to a line chart to to pie graph. Okay. Now over here as educators, uh, one simple thing: if you want to compare data across across a given timeline, uh, no, uh, to see a progress, a student's progress, then use a line chart. But if you have individual data uh, over months which do not compare to each other, then it's better to use um. Uh, column chart. When you want to find out a percentage over over hundred, okay, what percentage was this uh, uh, value of, as compared to uh, say how many students like apples as compared to oranges? Then you can use a pie chart, which gives you a percentage over hundred. Okay, so these are the three major charts you may pass during the exams uh, uh, to uh, in your scenario questions. Okay. Also, if I go back to the chart, one thing uh, which we can do is say, for example, 
Let me convert. Let me do a line chart again. So one thing which uh, during the coronavirus we also heard was uh, something like flattening the curve. Okay, that's something which is called as a trend line. Okay, it just gives a prediction of what is happening to the to the date. Now it works. A trend line to help us to to find out what is the uh, what what Reshma's performance is she improving over the months or she is uh, her performance is decreasing. To do that. If you go, if you double click on the chart and you click on series, if you go at the bottom, you have something called a thread line. If I click on the thread line, then it opens up a prediction line, which which can give you a better insight on how your student is doing. Okay, is is the extra classes helping him to improve his marks uh, and so on? Now that's, that's a little bit about charts. Now let's look at some of the other features available in. In 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 sheet. So if you see, if I if as I move upwards, the first row does not does not disappear. That's because I have I've chosen the first row. So if you go over here in, under view, so now if you see that first row disappears, which is a bit inconvenient for me to know which months which marks is there. So if I go to view, I can all I can go and freeze the first row. Okay. I could also go and please the first column because that's the name of the students which I have. Okay, so in that case, then my my month name and my student name does not disappear. Okay. What the other thing we uh, we can uh, we are asked in the exam is to email uh, email the sheet to a particular person in your. Organization, so you can say email as attachment, and that would open up in your dry uh, in your Gmail, and it would email as an attachment. Okay. Also, the other uh, other other thing which is asked is publish to the web. So when you click on publish to the web, that would publish your data on the web, and then you can get a link which you can place on Google Sites or in, in Google Slides. Okay. Sometimes we may need to present our data to the management. Okay. So if I open up slide, now if I have to present my data to the management, we can copy the chart or copy the, uh, uh, the the graph and paste it here. But that every time you change the data, the graph you have to change it. So one way is to in, in your slides is if you go to insert and you insert go to chart, you can insert from sheet. Over here, when you do that, then it will open up the spreadsheet, and it will open up the most recent spreadsheet. And if I select that, that would import the chart which is there. So now I can import the chart of Reshma directly into my slide. So whenever I make any changes in my sheet, that would reflect in my uh, in my slide. Now. I will, I will I will skip over the uh, editing part because that's very uh, very common. But a couple of other features which may be useful for us as uh, as educator. So sometimes what happens is, uh, let's take I have uh, I have a student who has filled up filled up the uh, the Google form twice. Now what happens is in that case. My data will be available twice, okay? and uh, that's a common thing which happens when you're using Google Form. What you can do is, if you go to data, you can go at the bottom to remove duplicates. Okay, so when I go to data and I go to bottom to remove duplicates, okay, I need to select my data. It, it finds it finds one duplicate which I did and it removed that. So now I can get the unique names and unique students. So if some students have filled up the form twice, that's a very easy way to remove it. Okay. The other way is uh, other other tool is sometimes we have the first names and uh, last names of students uh, mentioned. So for example.
I have now I want to separate these two to my first name and second name. So what I can do is I can select this, I can go back to data, and I can say split text to column. Okay, and I will select my separator as a space bar, space key here, and that would select my uh, separate my first name and last name into two columns, which which is there. Okay. Also, sometimes if you have asked the students to fill up a Google form or uh, manually enter the names, they may have uh, put some space bars, space bars in the start and the end. So over here, you also have trim white spaces, which would which will remove all of that extra space bars and clean up your data for you. Okay. Now we have a, a Google sheet can be used more than as a, a grading tool or uh, or a data analysis tool. Like for example, uh, you want to teach them vocabulary. So I have uh, if I use a simple formula, which is called Google Translate. I can select the word. My word is in English, and I want to convert it into the Gujarati. Okay, and if I press enter, that would use the Google Translate feature right into sheet and convert it, and then I can just drag it up to any of the words which are there. So that's and you can do that for Marathi, Hindi, anyway. So you can use Google Sheets to teach vocabulary. Okay, now let's come back to our data now. I have I have the average data, but I want to see whether my student has passed or failed. Okay. So now what I do is I you can use the formula which is called if. Okay. And I select the value. If my value is greater than five, I would say pass. If not, I would say fail. So simple formula if the value use the conditional operation it could be greater equal to whichever it is and there you go so you can then find out it's passed and then i can just drag it all the way you can see that one uh, one value which is which is fake so again this is a great way to uh, you know help uh, use simple formula tools to to work around uh, on your data okay Mr. Warrior, how much time do I yeah. have left? Actually, you already crossed your time, Murtaza. Okay. So that's all from my side. All the best for your exams and thank you, everyone. Yeah, uh, Mr. Uh, your next one. Yeah. So thanks, uh, Murtaza, for your brilliant topic, uh, topic and tips. It was really amazing to see how Excel sheets are giving us good results. So we have uh, Google Slides next. Sangeeta Mam is going to take over with that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Murtaza. That was really enlightening. A uh, lot of us uh, worry and uh, are scared of uh, trying out our hands at uh, Google Sheets, but I'm sure uh, your tips have uh, given us everybody, you know, a um, boost in the morale at least that yes, we can do it. So go ahead and, uh, you know, I, I would request everyone to try these little tips and tricks that have been shown. Uh, the next uh, app that we are talking about of Google is Google Slides. Now that is something that I think most of us are familiar with and uh, what we are looking at as making presentations that is where uh, you are able to uh, use this app. So this is definitely something you might have already tried. But since we want to cover all the possible features, here we go. Uh, again, request to participants to look for Sangeeta Gulati or rather GEG uh, Daily NCR logo in the chat because I'm not uh, here signed in by my name, but GEG leader. So you can pin the presentation so that you can see the screen. We are changing hands, so that might be the problem. What you can see right now is a folder in my Google Drive. So that's my tip one. Every work that you are going to be doing has to be in a folder. So here you are working in the folder which I have created for today. And to create a new slide, you can click on this plus new button and you will be able to find the Google Slides app. You can start with a blank presentation because most of the instructions that you need uh, will come for a blank presentation. So start with a blank presentation and every time you start, whether it is a doc, sheets, slides, any other app that you first open, it comes as an untitled document. 
so give a name to the file that you have created so untitled presentation could become our you know test run one or something whichever name you want to give to that file so that is something special and also when the task is assigned in the google um, the exam that you will write it will give you specific name of the file so that name of the file has to be used and then we can explore and understand what are the other features which you might want to try out and use once you have the name or the file started i'm going to just change over to something for my reference so i have one file called bootcamp ready here and we are going to be working in this uh, file just to explore various possibilities as a basic set of skills which you must know and be aware of when you are uh, preparing or using google slides it's not only for the exam that this bootcamp would help or uh, to get that certification it is also perhaps going to give you some of the tips and tricks which you might not have noticed so of course the very first thing is when you open the slides it might start with a title slide by default as you can see here uh, and then if you want to change the layout under the layout you have various layouts that you can choose adding a slide is not a problem you can always click on this button here of plus new slide and every time you click on it it will take a new slide add a new slide with the format same as the previous one if you want to change new slide with the layout you can again click on that little i call it the baby arrow click on that and you will be able to find the different layouts again and you can choose a new slide with a different layout that is definitely always a possibility now once you have your slides ready and you are going to work in them then of course the very first thing is to understand well as it says click to add title so if you click here you can add a title here so we can always write something whatever now when you are going to write your certification you need to give the title same as what has been given in the instructions you will not make your own um, instruct uh, words or language exactly just follow what the uh, instruction says Uh, because it's basically testing your skills so you do not have to get creative in that i think somebody else had mentioned that earlier as well so here the title that has come in but just in case you started with a blank slide suppose you had a, a layout to be a blank one you can always insert a text box so to box so from the insert uh, you can choose to insert the text box and then you can write the text in that also sometimes it is helpful to have a effective presentation uh, you want certain fancy style of writing go to insert and look for word art so if i look at word art i can then type in something here which then would look better and more effective you can change the font style as you have selected it you can change the font style and make it look a little different a little more uh, playful perhaps depending on the need you can change the colors of this as you work on it change the outline so this is something which is important for you to be aware of so you might be asked to write the title itself using the word art or otherwise so this is something which definitely is helpful because this is a text which you can move around you can change the format only of the word art and nothing else so that is definitely a good tip again in the uh, menu here there are a lot of these options given and one of the option is to look at the shapes so when you look at the shapes tool here you get lot of these shapes which you can use to create your slides whether it is to highlight or to add something or even create a flow chart you can use all of them from here so let me take maybe a circle so once i have the circle tool you can see the uh, cursor has now changed to a cross here and now if i press and i can drag i will get a circle it might look like an ellipse to some you can drag and change it you can make it big small whichever shape and size you want change the color of that so just in case you want to change the color of it that can be done 
let's try and insert one more shape here so i can take maybe this rounded rectangle so i can have another shape added in here change the color of that if you would like to once you have this created try to explore other parts in the menu you have a line tool when you click on this again that baby arrow you find more options so under the line tool you have the line arrow elbow connector curved connectors so all these are very useful tools when you look at creating some flow charts you can use this so curved connector if i bring to hover over the image uh, the shape that i have added you can see these purple dots if i click and drag i would be able to join it with another uh, image as it is in this case so i'm going to redo that and of course undo button are always there can i request everyone to mute their mic uh, so curved connection if i pick come over here and you can then move around and you will join it with a purple dot so this connects the two images what else can we do in an image going back to the select tool if i come back to this circle and i click on it it's something which i can type on so i can maybe want to give some instruction so i can say step 1 so i can definitely choose to change the font color i can change the font size so these are the very basic instructions that you would need to be aware of format fonts and colors is something we all do all the time but what if i want to link this step 1 to another website i want students to visit some other website another resource uh, for example i have because i wanted you to be aware of this website so i have this google for education trainer uh, certification course open i can just copy this link so i highlight the, the website link and i copy that i come back to the slides and wherever i have highlighted the shape look for a chain like icon on the top of the menu so here is if i select this circle and i look here you will be able to find insert link click on that and you can insert a link to that shape so that when you click on it in the present mode when you present your presentation this link will be active it won't be seen but the moment i click on this step one it will open up the website or any other link that is attached with it so that is definitely the advantage of linking the text again right now the presentation is in the present mode so i can't edit so we have to go ahead and come back to looking at some more features what else can i do with it once i have here i can move over to add another slide and we can insert let's explore some more options with the insert i can insert an image there are six options given here how to insert image the best would be search the web so you might be asked to insert image of a certain object so suppose i want to insert image of a penguin and i just type that word in i get all these images here i can pick a particular image so i click on it it gets highlighted insert and that image can be inserted in the slide you can crop it if you want you can resize just by pulling the corners of it and drag and place it somewhere else you have already seen the power of explore button in google sheets in slides you have the explore button which will change the format the slides will turn and look very professional if you want them to uh, you know look different you can put any of these possibilities options if this is what you want or this is what you want or you want a border those things can be easily done with the option of explore again not only inserting an image but you can also insert videos into your google slides again going back to the insert look for the video click on the video you can have video in your drive but usually it is in context so suppose you are teaching uh, a certain topic and you want to uh, find a video related to your topic so being a math teacher in teachers and i know what this uh, youtube is about i select and i can insert this 
so in the basic skills only insert is uh, definitely required and it, uh, it's uh, important that you should know but again it's not only for certification if you are learning it for the first time play with these settings to see how you can format the start and the stop time of the google um, of the video that is inserted in a slide so that is definitely something important and convenient and easy for you going back to our earlier slide let's see what else we can do here now that i've created something i might want to share it with someone so the sharing settings are mostly the same as we go along in the other apps as well once you click on this yellow share button you will get this little dialog box opening up you can add the name of the person or the email id if they are in your contact it will pop up immediately so if i want to share it with my personal account i can do that or with anyone else once i select that what rights do you want to give you have to be very careful on that if you do not give them the rights to view or to for edit or do you want them just to comment on the slides that you have made choose the correct uh, uh, settings here this is crucial so if you give them the viewer rights put a message here and uh, then you can send this as a notification the person will get it in the mail if this checkbox is corrected if i send this the person will get the notification they'll be able to view the slides that have been created if you want a colleague to just observe and give comments you can select a particular box and from here now i can add a comment and if i add a comment i can put a comment by again typing either at the rate sign or a plus sign and i can add that person of course i need to either assign and when i'm sharing this or assign putting this comment google will tell me whether the slides have been shared with the person or not but if it has been already shared i can assign this little work whatever comment i want see here someone needs access to the file because i have only given them the view rights so i can share with one person whether it is for comment or i want the other person to edit i can change that right away so this is something very important and google is uh, kind of guiding you through that uh, those steps as you go along so comment where it is just uh, in a individual one to one it is being shared so that the person gets to know uh, that this comment is meant for them and that is where that assigned button is concerned what else are we uh, looking for let me check whatever i missed out add comments direct comments and of course uh, do not miss the fact that i am using what we call as the speaker notes so when i have created this because i had uh, so many other things but i can't get carried away i have to keep myself on track so i had written these little notes this is called the speaker's notes you can even pull this up and you know make more space for you to add it you can in case you know you have a long paragraph you can add the content there but this is something that you can also use for voice typing because google docs has voice typing but google slides you can only do voice typing in the speaker notes so do make use of the speaker notes for your own reference for your own uh, uh, understanding of what you mean to talk about in a particular uh, deck or in a, a particular presentation so that is uh, definitely something for us to be aware of and then the rest uh, the field is open for you to try and uh, play with it now sometime you want to now bring some color in the background right there is the moment you look at this background you can choose the image or you can change the color and that would take care of your uh, aesthetics if you feel like doing that so i hope i have not exceeded the time too much uh, but i would like to leave you with a little homework because till you actually try and practice these little things it would not uh, be effective so you have your phones around take a picture of this slide that has come up try these uh, little tasks and time yourself as well because this is a skill check that is being done and hopefully you will uh, master it in no time so go ahead take a picture of this slide and uh, try out these 
as you practice and revisit these tips. Thank you so much, everyone, and wish you all the best. Thank you, Sangeeta, ma'am. It was really brilliant to learn from you. It's always been an, uh, brilliant to, you know, it's always uh, interesting to learn from you, the topics. And yes, the most important thing is the assignment that you provide. Yes, it's very interesting. So this was all about the slide. And yes, uh, uh, from the examination point of view, MAM has covered all the topics that is relevant from the uh, point of uh, level one certification. And these are the important things that are required. But don't worry, in the scenario, you will be having enough time. You'll be given enough instructions that you can understand and you can perform. Just as MAM has given this assignment, you complete this assignment, then believe me, your scenarios will be complete as well. So no need to worry for that. So next we have uh, Narjeet Ma'am, Dr. Narjeet Kaur for Google Forms. Narjeet Ma'am, over to you. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Dr. Narjeet and in the next 15 minutes, I'll take you through uh, some information about Google Forms and Sangeeta ma'am, let me mention that was an amazing, amazing presentation. Thank you so much for that. And um, Thank you. you know, these kinds of, yeah, these kinds of programs, the boot camps that we are having today, they are very, very useful if you are, uh, uh, you know, aspiring to clear and also very helpful if you want to meet your childhood friends sometimes. So uh, with that thought, I will take the presentation forward. Yeah, so Google Forms allow you to create custom online forms and send them to others. It could be surveys or quizzes, and it is especially very important for educators since it allows them to create quizzes and worksheets for the students. So first, uh, for that, we need to create a new Google Form, and for that, we need to go to our drive, and I'll start presenting now. So here we are, we, we are in my drive. Click on this new button, scroll down, see forms. Now Google Forms gives you an option either to create the form with a blank form. You can do your own customization and settings, or there are templates also available for that. For example, you want to create a, a form for some party invitation or some uh, you know, the uh, workshop that you're going to have. So there are pre-made as we can say forms available you can just add data to that but uh, today we are going to learn with blank form only so here we are let's quickly give it a title and i'm going to add a header here, you can choose any image as a header, which appears on the top of your form. It could be inserted from your computer, or uh, you can insert from the URL, or you can take it out from uh, the preset headers of Google Forms only. Some theme colors added. You can have any font style that you want. This is my favorite when I work, and so we are done. Now, I'll come to this portion of uh, uh, making questions, adding questions to this uh, uh, form. Before that, uh, I will uh, configure the form first because designing the content of your form is only half of what you have to do before you send it out to your students or public. So let's explore the settings uh, a little. And for that, we are going to click on the gear, which is here. You see, it says settings. Let's click on it and then we go. The first one it says is general. Now in the general tab, you see a box to collect email addresses. You see uh, this uh, small thing which says collect email addresses. What does it mean? It helps you to identify your students and it really comes handy, especially if you forget to include a first name or the last name field. And then when you get all the responses, you don't actually know who said what. So if you choose this, it will collect all the email addresses of your students. Next we have is response receipts. You see, in response receipts, what's happened is, uh, as the question mark box, you see here, it says respondents will receive. Here, respondents, maybe you will, uh, are your students. They will receive a copy of what they have answered on this form. Now, this is kind of nice if you're having students or people sign up for uh, special workshops or special uh, 
seminars in the school and then you want them to remember what they signed up for so you can check this off and on uh, as per your liking and as per your specifications if you are asking for permission then if the respondents request you can do that or if it is always that is you are all day the respondents are always going to get a response receipt now the next one limit to one response it is pretty obvious uh, students should be able to submit their answers only once not multiple times and the last one is the respondents can now these are some of the uh, rights that you are going to uh, give to the children to whether or not after submitting a form you want them to give editing rights if they want to change their answers or if you want them to see the progress of how other people have answered uh, you are to allow them if you wish to see the summary of how the overall exam or the survey is going on so there can be number of reasons why you want to turn it off or on so next we are going to move we are done with this next we will move to our presentation tab now presentation tab the first option here is show progress bar progress bar would be nice if you have a multi page form so it would let the students know that there are you know they are 40% done or they are 50% done and so on and so forth now if i uh, check this the next is shuffling the question order now a uh, shuffle question order in this option it can come handy if you are using the form with quizzes which i will come to a little later so the questions shuffle features shuffle questions within sections only this is what you have to really remember for example i have a quiz with three sections the first two are just name fields and class section fields to proceed to the last section with 50 multiple choice questions and i want to shuffle section 3 with questions in the quiz now if i turn this on every child will receive the form with the sequence of the questions different right now for that i will break uh, the intro info into maybe the separate sections one question in each section and then the body of the quiz it 50 sections uh, questions is in the third section so therefore the 50 questions of the quiz in section 3 are shuffling as i want them to shuffle and the next option you see here is a show link to submit another form now it if it is a forum where your students can submit multiple forms like maybe you are having a small award ceremony in the class or some investiture in the class and your students have several people they wish to nominate so this way when they click submit they it will show them a link to submit yet another form if they want to do it all over again and finally here we have a confirmation message now confirmation message is a very very nice place i find a great place to put in a thank you message or anything that gives the students an idea of what is going to happen next so students after they click submit come to know that the response has been recorded either you can write your response has been recorded as is being a little faded here or you can write a simple thank you as well and the children will receive this after they are done now the next thing we come to is quizzes um this is a very very important tab because teachers can use google form to actually make a graded quiz it's a very important setting and if you click on the slider see here the slider if you click on the slider and if you slide it then you uh, it is going to introduce the functionality that google has of changing a regular form to a quiz it will allow you to assign different options also see the moment i uh, clicked it on there were so many other options that got highlighted if i put it off none of them are getting highlighted so i uh, let's make this form a quiz and then we will go through the next options that are here uh it gives you a lot of auto grading options also and it is a very very nice thing for any teacher uh if they have do not have to check a lot of things and the form does it on their own so the first option here is release grades if if you want only that after they have submitted the form see immediately after they have submitted the form you want that the google should auto grade and send them uh, their scores you can check this or this you know this comes a lot of uh, 
at places handy when you are giving them an objective or formative assessment kind of a test or a revision test for example if you are making a revision sheet or test and you want the students to see the answer key then you can definitely leave this on and in case you do not want the students to see the marks immediately or you have made a subjective paper which you want to check manually later on and after that you can release then you have to check this option the next are what all the respondents or your students can see when they submit or when they take the form now your you can decide whether your students can see which questions were missed by them or see the correct answers for each question after the grades are released also you can give them a small feedback like as to uh, their answer was wrong but if it was wrong why was it wrong and you can give them a small thumbs up or a very good for the correct answer and at the same time check the next one also if you want to show uh, here check this uh, point value uh, option also if you want to show them the total points they have received and the points received after each questions so i am going to make this form a quiz i'm going to save it from here and let's start adding little questions i'm going to make a small form so that we can explore other options as well name the place where Mahatma Gandhi was born. Now, because we have made it a quiz, you will see that it is giving you Anki as well. You can mark it. Now, Google is very smart. See, poor Bandar. It has already given you an answer. Poor Bandar. Is it a right answer? You can mark it. You can use this correct answer. Now, it's this is showing it as a short answer. You can take up many options of how you want the students to answer the question. It can be a short answer. It could be a small paragraph. It can be multiple choice. It can be check boxes. I'll start with multiple choice ones. So, Porbandar, as it was very smartly told us also, or Delhi. And it can, you can click on add other if you think the students will feel that, okay, none of these are correct. I want to add my own answer. They can do that. Now click on answer key. Check the right answer. A lot. How many marks you want to, how many points you want to give? Say two marks. We can give answer feedback for incorrect. You can ask them to go back. I do that very often when I give my children uh, something to uh, take in the form and if they answer it wrong I always include a video which I have already made for them uh, uh, while explaining the lesson and all so if they answer it incorrectly I insert that video here and uh, because we do not have much time I'm going to quickly go over to the next sections but this is a very very nice option or a link from uh, from Google or from some place on Nest where from you can include, okay, this is the right data and this you have to read again if you want the answers to be correct next time. So for correct answer, give them, okay, great and whatever, and then you save it. Now with this plus sign, we can move on to the next question. Uh, you know, many of us have already tried uh, all these options also. So, Now, if I write, please rate this uh, presentation. Again, I say Google has given us an option. It could be on linear scale from one to five. Five could be uh, poor and, five, sorry, one could be poor and five could be uh, brilliant. Right? And so in the answer key, you will see there aren't, you can do it, but there isn't any specific answer for this. Right? Because it is only a grading which the children will do on their own. We can take up another question, which is, uh, say, a checkbox kind of a question. And I can add a question, a number of continents. OK, so let's say number of continents only. So option one could be four. Uh, this one could be two. And if they want to add another another then answer key uh, none of this is right though but i'm going to mark this four i'm fine and 
points, whichever we want to give, and then we are done. Now, this is one form. I will quickly go into how to send this because uh, this is uh, what is mainly tested in the level one certification, how to send the forms. Now, for sending the forms also, uh, there are settings you want to send out this form. You are going to click on send as we just this. There are a bunch of ways you can send out this form. You can do it by an email. You just have to name, okay, whom do you want to send this email to? Um, You can write the email addresses, you can write the subject, and you can check this on and off, include form in email. Now, if you do not write include form in email or you check this uh, button, what happens is it embeds the, it embeds the form in the, uh, you know, in the email of the person you are sending it to so that they do not have to click uh, through the service or the question paper. So as they open it, the questions are open before embedding means like uh, it is a very technical term. We can uh, explore this later. But with, when we embed it, it can show right away in the email only and they can start answering the questions there on without having to click through uh, the form. Then there are links. Uh, these are the links. You can uh, have longer link. If you want a shorter link, you can have this also. You can share your link on Facebook. See, um, if you see, now this is my Facebook ID and this form is getting shared there, right? You can share this. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to come back. Has my presentation stopped? Yes, ma'am, it stopped. Yes, yeah. yes, it is stopped, yeah. But that was a great then information that you are giving. Right, we are here. So when we click on send again, as I told you, that is a link. You can send the longer link or you can shorten it. You can share it on Facebook or Twitter, or you can uh, click on this option, embed HTML, wherein you can take this link and embed it in the sites. Uh, it is going to be very useful there. And you can uh, always uh, uh, give these specifications, right? So these are how you are going to uh, send now. I am going to send this form in the chat box. Uh, please do it very, very quickly. And uh, I'll share it in the chat box if you can do it. And you can send. And in no time, I'll check you. Uh, I'll show you where the responses are getting recorded. And then we can go. In the meantime, I'll show you. This Hello. button where you see responses. If you go here, right now, nobody has attempted it, and I'm not getting any response. Now, this button, as you see, accepting responses. The moment you feel that I must close this form now, I'm not going to accept any more responses, then you can check this off, and it will show you a red bar showing not expect accepting responses. I'm going to click it on because many are, I've got two responses, three already. So you can show these responses. You can see these responses individually. See, I'll see the summary. Uh, these are the people because I was collecting email IDs. These are the people who have already responded to this. These are the they and. Uh, okay, okay. And here we are. Right? Let's see, Rishmas. Okay, and here we are. Then so many others have joined. So now the main point is um, where the responses are getting recorded. So you can see individual responses from here. You can also see the uh, responses question wise. Okay? And then mainly, which is going to be tested, that is, where do you want these responses to get recorded, like destination? So uh, you have to, you can create a spreadsheet. You Either you can create a new spreadsheet for this, or you can select the existing spreadsheet for the same. So I'm going to create a new spreadsheet, and let's create, and I'll show you. Right? 
So this is uh, where your responses are recorded on the spreadsheet. So now, the, see, it is auto-graded because it was auto-graded. It is showing you the scores also that each have received. So it is a brilliant thing for any teacher who wouldn't have to check much. And uh, uh, the Google is such a blessing for us when it is going to auto-grade our objective tests. So from here, that was all from me. I'll tell you just one more thing, like what all things are tested, uh, what all things you should prepare, and what all have I covered when you are going to appear for the exam. They, uh, they are going to show you, uh, they're going to ask you about how to create a form, how to add uh, a couple of different type of questions, choose a response destination, uh, go with some settings, sending the form to others, and view responses. So these are the five main things that you have to prepare uh, when you are uh, going with your uh, uh, examination. So all the best, everybody, those who are going to appear. I'm going to appear for my level two in a uh, hello, couple of days. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Can we send this in uh, Microsoft Excel? Yes. You can okay. download this yes, sheet yes, as Excel. Excel. Yeah. You can download this sheet as Excel. You can also send it in Excel. You can also copy the link. You can share it if you want. So if I am here, I'll show you. There is one share as Sangeeta ma'am and others also showed you the option of how to share. So if, for example, um, if you want to share this with your co-teacher, you can always add, say, I'm going to send it to my first. You want them to edit, or you just want them to view it, or you just want them to comment on it. It is upon you. You can uh, uh, you know, choose an option, or you can send them like this also. Plus, there is another option wherein you can share the link. See here. You, there is a link here, and you will get options for link also. Anyone with this link, either they can view, or they can comment, or they can edit. So you can send it on WhatsApp group. You can send it on your uh, uh, Google groups. You can send it anywhere that you want. So that is not a problem at all. So that's all okay, from thank here. You. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha. And uh, over to Mr. Varya or Rechma, whoever. I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank Dr. You so Najit. Yeah, Rashma. Yeah, I'll stop. I'll stop uh, sharing. Yes, thank you so much. It was a great insight on forms. Forms is one of the important uh, part of the uh, for level one exam. So now uh, I will welcome Ms. Uh, Mukta Sablok, and she's going to give us more uh, a tool that she's going to discuss another tool. So welcome, Ms. Mukta. Thank you, Reshma. Thank you, Reshma. Ma Good evening, all. I am Mukta Sablok, and I am here to tell you two important things of, uh, or we can say, uh, two important tools uh, of Google. One is Google Contacts, and the second one is the Jamboard. These two things I am going to present you. Uh, so, first of all, Google Contacts. As we all know, we are using Android phone, and it is connected with our Gmail IDs. So, Google Contacts is one of the app which is attached with our gmail id and you can explore it using your gmail id i'm just presenting my screen and show you how you can do it and how you can add more contacts with your gmail using google contacts just i'm sharing uh, uh, reshma ma'am please confirm whether my screen is visible to all of you yeah it's getting visible ma'am okay. thank, thank you yeah. so first, thank you sir uh, first of all, we click over the plus sign and we can write here contacts.google.com and whatever email ID you are having, uh, like this is my Gmail ID which is already open, it will open uh, with the Gmail IDs and this is the contacts option. If this Gmail ID is attached with my, my mobile phone, then all your contacts will be visible here which are stored in your mobile phones, which you have stored in your Gmail IDs. Now, I had already entered Eshma and Dr. Varya's Gmail IDs in this. So we can, uh, how we can create our contact. I'm just clicking over create contact. And you can create your contact from here. 
as if i will just add on my other id as mukta sablok and this and that and you can add on your mobile numbers you can add on your company details your job title and all that things which you want your contacts to have it in your gmail ids like this is a google contacts attached with your gmail id you can save it and it is saved in your google contacts of your gmail now the second more important thing is which we are using nowadays is like we have we are using google classroom mostly for our taking our online classes in that we need students email ids for our google contact so the gmail id which we are you are using for your uh, google classroom you can upload the students gmail ids or contact details in this it is directly linked to your google classroom also this google contacts is directly linked to your google classroom also so no need to create like there is an option of creating one by one also you can create multiple contacts also if you have an excel file already created we all have excel files uh, of our students name their phone numbers their contact details and their email ids we already have this uh with us as a teachers we have these things so you can convert that excel file into csv file you can save that file into csv format and in uh, you can import the full csv file into it i had already created my uh, one of the class csv file this is my excel file which was already created i will just open it and import it so all of a sudden how many students i have all their email ids and their contact numbers if it is i don't have any contact numbers but they are connected and uploaded into my google contacts now how i can use this google contacts into my classroom i have created a google classroom here we already know uh, as well classroom we are not discussing but still i'm just telling you because i have uploaded it in in uh, my google contacts of my email id so i can add on to it here directly uh, any name if i will give and it will uh, like uh, whatever you have with uh, uh, let's suppose i have given here my name which i have already added into so it will automatically come if google contacts i have already added so it will already come and the invitation through your google classroom will go so this is what you can create labels differently you can have frequently contacted list all that thing so now if you do not have your mobile phone with you you have all your google contacts with it i hope uh, this is clear like it is a uh, simple to use it's just a tip i i was just giving you how you can use your google contacts i hope this is uh, clear and uh, to this uh, now the second point which i need to discuss yeah. with you all is my jam boards just a moment ma'am yeah um, see google contacts is just a simple tool that uh, uh, mukta ma'am has very nicely presented uh, with us now what is important from level 1 point of view is that you now they will be just asking very simple questions that add this email into your contacts or copy this email to your contacts so it's not much that uh, is going to be asked for from the contacts view point but yes you practically you must know so as sangeeta ma'am said or rajit ma'am said or as we all already mentioned in our write up that it is see it's not about just appearing in the examination it's more about doing it yourself knowing it how to do it so uh, this was very nice mr ma'am you may please continue with your next topic thank you so so my next topic is jamboard jamboard basically is the google whiteboard interactive whiteboard which we can use in two ways like one way we can have that interactive whiteboard give it to the students to work on it collaboratively or separately also so uh, i am mostly using jamboard while taking online classes we all like as a teachers we are now taking online classes uh, most of us are taking online classes right now so i am using jamboards while taking my online classes and it's a brilliant tool i write it show present my jamboard and the students can also 
react collaborate on my jamboard which i shared with them so i'm just giving you a demo that how you can share the jamboard in the google classroom also or while taking your small uh, online classes also so first of all if i'll take you to online classes to share the screen we have in our google meet a jamboard attached when you will click over these three dots uh, after the presenting option while taking online classes through google meet where the present option is there after the three three dots there a jamboard open a jamboard whiteboard option appears the first option when we click over there there are two options start a new whiteboard or choose from drive so if you want to collaborate you can always create a jamboard before your class and keep it ready with you i am selecting first of all choose from drive then i'll show you the next option this is a jamboard which i had already created for you all so it is i have just opened double clicked over here now it will ask me that i can share it with all the participants who are here in the meeting again they have we have the options i can only ask you to view it or i can ask you to edit it so if i ask you to edit it i can also say and uh, like i can also turn on the link sharing option otherwise just i am just sharing share with nine people who are here and i have clicked over the send option so it will go to your email id with which you have joined with this google session with which you are joined this google session otherwise second option i am just showing you that i can open this again open jam and i can share it the link also in the chat box so that you can open it right now here yeah we request everyone to please click on the link so that you can also collaborate here the link is sent in the chat i have given here the editing option to everybody so here i can just say and then i'll just paste it on sorry here is some i think uh, the link option is already there and somebody is najit ma'am has joined and uh, uh, so i have uh, like it can be used as i have given this option carnivorous herbivorous animals and you can ask the students to do it or to insert it is a wonderful tool you can ask the students to add image when you add image uh, like you can search it from google you can upload it from your drive or you can also upload it from your computer like the child can upload uh, i have just given these two options you can upload these two we can have a discussion of uh, like a differentiation second thing you can also give the students the option of adding on to it means you can ask the child to that one by one first child will write the answer here second child will have the next frame the new frame and it's one file only it's one file only and you can have this image then you can create the circles if we are uh, like the shapes and all that we can also write we can uh, write with the help of mouse also free hand writing otherwise we can type it also a sticky note option is very great like we can ask the students to just write their name of whatever work they are doing so that at least we know that this is the sticky note so this is a very wonderful tool i loved it this uh, like while sharing it now uh, these these are the three dots you can always rename it because when we open a new uh, jamboard it comes with untitled as we have all the apps so you can always rename it uh, then like this and uh, thank you dikti ma'am you have just trying share option share on the public these are all the things which i already said the next thing is that you can also give this jamboard in your google classroom 
how you can do that i'm going back to again my google classroom this is my classroom i have created this topic now i want to give an assignment this assignment i have just written assignment 1 and i can either upload it or send a link here it is since it is in my google drive i can upload it through this is my jamboard i can ask the students only to view it or make a copy for each student so that each individual child can write on my jamboard and uh, just say and we can assign it to the and in this way we can use it very simply no need to use any other software very simply on a whiteboard we can interact with the students have any of the uh, assignment with the students so uh, thank you uh, all of you for listening me patiently and thank you uh, reshma ma'am and dr varya for giving this opportunity to exploring it please explore these options and you can any time contact us on whatsapp for any other detail now over to reshma ma'am reshma you must oh yes okay thank you so much mukta ma'am and all the presenters here i think we have finished with today's topic that we wanted to cover in this boot camp and thank you so much for all your participation now i'm going to just using one tool that was just shared with you all i'm going to give you a small fun assignment that we are going to collaborate together just to learn so i am pasting a link here of a jam board so mukta, please uh, sorry mukta ma'am please just stop presenting the screen Oh okay sorry so i'm i just sent a link of a jam board and i want you all to be able to uh, i want you all to access the jam board and please tell us about two questions i put up two screens there okay so if you see i can see a lot of people joining in i have two frames so you can see we can have different frames here right so if you look one and two i have put just two questions on these two frames we want to know from you what tools did you learn here now i'm just going to quickly tell you to help you how you can you can write you can use a pen free writing you can use a sticky note which is actually very good you can change the colors of the sticky note write something that you want you can just yeah, you can say hello to us you can use a shape that will help you put your text inside this shape or you can directly use this text box just drag it here and you can start typing so please let us know i would just request please do not delete what is uh, already been done though we have the undo button here but i would just like request you not to delete um, whatever others have done so let's take maybe just one minute to put up i see almost more than 17 people have joined our board uh, please write down on the first screen what tools did you learn from today's session and on the second screen please go ahead and put up what tools will you like to learn more in detail and we all can see what others are typing so this is a brilliant uh, exercise and this is the magic of this uh, google tool and uh, moreover this is the beauty of this boot camp it's not only about certification it's all about empowering the educators to engage their students so see these tools you know will help you in this pandemic they are all you know working from home or working from a remote place the students are in remote place and they are working from their own homes so we need to engage them in this particular way and google is providing us this very really beautiful features uh, in google for education that can be used for this engagement purposes jamboard with the slides with the docs you know you can have multiple students working on the same document same sheet same slide same jam board all together it's, it could be a very great collaborative exercise just as we are doing it right now so uh, this is something very brilliant and i i must exclaim that all the mentors today have, have given their wonderful presentations and i really three cheers for them a uh, very good uh, thank you very much for all the mentors for today sangeeta ma'am najit ma'am mukta ma'am devraj murtaza reshma of course so yes and it's uh, concluding time for today's session and uh, tomorrow what we have i'll just give a quick analysis tomorrow what we have is google classroom 
uh, which will be uh, covered by an answer. He has been handling his uh, G Suite console for his school, and uh, it's going to be very fun learning from him. And there are other tools that will be covered in tomorrow's session, starting with Google Classroom. So on the last note, I would just want everybody to, if possible, for those people who can turn on their videos, then I would just need to have just a single uh, snapshot. And Reshma, you can also take up a snapshot. So turn on the videos, please. Come on. Jag jao, sone ka time khatam ho gaya hai. Aur abhi aapko kaam shuru hota hai. Right, so yes, yes, so we got so many people and the beauty of it is that today we had more than 93 educators joining us from different parts of the world and different parts of the country and we have, uh, the count has never gone less than 85, as of now 85 educators are joining, joining with us. So thank you very much one and all, I'm just taking a clip, you can put a thumbs up if you want, you can put any, any particular sign, yes, it's one. Two and three. Here, here we go. So I just click an image. Thank you. Thank you so all. much, Dr. Varia, for always uh, creating the links for the meet, sending it to everybody in time, and allowing everybody to join the our sessions. Yeah. And thank you so much, educators. You are doing a great job within your school. Now it's time to just upgrade yourself. It just gives you a lot of confidence uh, in yourself. And then you you learn to explore more things in detail. So we look forward to looking at uh, looking forward to meeting you again tomorrow. We still have more tools to discuss, and I would specially thank uh, uh, all the educators who contributed today. And thank you to Dr. Uh, Ms. Sangeeta, ma'am. She is the most senior pers person in our group, and so much to learn from her. So please get in touch with anybody of us for any more information. And you are free to join any number of Google groups. It is not that uh, city mein ho to wahi wala group join karna hai. Feel free to join all the groups that you feel will benefit you. Yeah. And whenever you are going to appear for your examinations or register for examinations, obviously we'll be taking up this topic on the last day of our session on the day three that has you register for the examinations. Then uh, just a piece of advice is do not forget to mention about this bootcamp. They'll ask you from where did we give this advice to you know, do the certification course. So it's something uh, that is being done on a voluntary basis. And on the last day, we will also be sharing you the details of the Pune, KG, Andamad, and different KGs and around your uh, area so that you can join your uh, professional learning network and be updated always. So thank you one and all. And this is the closing uh, for today's session. Today we covered for uh, one hour 45 minutes and I really appreciate everyone's patience to be there around all the all through this time It's not easy to be a student. We all know and we know understand this from this session. So once again, thank you very much and uh, We can start leaving the meet as of now. Thank you once again. I'm stopping the record Thank you. All. Thank you everybody. Goodbye Bye, Bye. Yes, please go ahead. You